What's up guys, Chase on Two Wheels here, and this is the Firefly 6S. Yeah, I know, another GoPro clone, but this one I'm actually excited for. So my buddies over at GearBest messaged me and were like, Chase, we want you to review another camera. And I was like, I'm totally down for that, but this one, it actually has to be good. So I told them, send me the best one you have. So after my last camera test, I think you guys know that camera specs don't mean everything, but here are the specs for the Firefly 6S. Compared to the GoPro, these specs look pretty expected, right? I mean, let's be honest, it can do 4K video at 24 frames a second, it can do 1080p at 60 frames a second, which is pretty much what the majority of the people want these days. Now just because the camera can shoot high resolution video doesn't mean it's gonna look good. The best way I knew to test this out was to go grab my other 4K capable action camera, aka GoPro 4 Black, and see the difference. For this shot, I attached both cameras onto each side of my bike and went for a little ride. Before I tell you, based on what you're looking at, which do you think is the GoPro? It's pretty hard to tell, right? Okay, so those shots were shot at 1080p at 60 frames a second, which is what I typically shoot my Moto Vlogs at. Let's try the same thing out with 4K. Here's some sample shots. Once again, I think this camera really holds its own. As far as file sizes, it's a little bit of the same story as last time. The exact same videos recorded on the Firefly and the GoPro gave me similar results to the last time I did a review. A time lapse that I did with both cameras with identical settings left me with a 29.7 gigabyte file on the GoPro and a 13.3 gigabyte file on the Firefly. It seems like this camera, regardless of looking better, still isn't bringing in the same amount of information that the GoPro is. But hey, it looks pretty good. Obviously you guys can see for yourself, but I feel like the video quality out of this camera really holds up. Now to another really important part of this camera, the battery. This guy runs off of a 1600 milliamp hour battery that is the exact same shape and size as the battery found in the GoPro 3 and the 3 Plus. As a matter of fact, it can even run off of the GoPro battery, though the battery it comes with holds slightly more power as compared to the GoPro 3's 1180 milliamp hour battery size. Just as a comparison, the GoPro 4 battery is the smallest of all of these with 1160 milliamp hours. So the battery is bigger than the GoPro 3, but how long does the thing last? I did a time lapse test between the Firefly and the GoPro 4. Both were recording 4K at 24p, had fully charged batteries, and even had the exact same card. The GoPro lasted for 62 minutes, with the Firefly only lasting 72 minutes. We all know that the major downfall of the GoPro is the battery life, and while this camera does a little better, it's still nothing stellar. Another important aspect I personally look for in these little Chinese copy cameras is how well you can integrate them into the camera gear that you already have. I'm not a big fan of having to switch all my GoPro cases and straps and mounts just because I grab an additional camera. As expected, this camera fits perfect into the latest GoPro case. The only downside to using it in a GoPro case is losing the functionality of the settings button. On the GoPro, you can find the settings button on the right side at the bottom, whereas the Firefly settings buttons are at the top and the same side. Surprisingly, navigating the settings on this camera were very easy to move through. It didn't take me long to get the camera settings changed to what I was looking for. I will note that the way the camera displays how long it's been recording is a bit odd. Here I would expect it to tell me how long the current recording has been going and how many files have been recorded, but instead it shows me the current time? Also, formatting your memory card in this camera is a bit odd. When you go to format, I would expect to get some sort of in-progress screen and then a finished screen. As you can see, once you format the card, it just goes back to the screen. In comparison, this is what happens when you format a card with a GoPro camera. One thing I was not a fan of with this camera is how bright the blinking record button was. With this camera mounted to my helmet, I had a really hard time telling if it was blinking or not, which is a little annoying and extremely important if you're trying to figure out if you're actually recording on a camera. And finally, I have to say my biggest gripe with the entire camera and what might be a deal breaker for a ton of you guys. The micro USB port is not able to be used as a microphone input. This means when you try to plug your helmet microphone into it, there will be no audio. This is really bad and hurts the camera so much in my book. Hopefully I just had an incorrect setting somewhere, but this has really let me down with this camera, especially for how well it did in all the other testing. While the mic input didn't work out for this camera for a microphone, it does have a built-in microphone similar to the GoPro. 
Here's an example of what it sounds like when the bike's running. And compared to how the GoPro sounds. Keep in mind all of the things that I've said about this camera thus far and how well it looked next to the GoPro 4 Black, which retails for between $450 and $500. The Firefly is available for around $100, depending on the sales going on at the time. Now for you guys that are interested in vlogging with this camera, I've got a little workaround for you. It's a little more of a pain than using the GoPro with the audio, but it turns out really good quality. Instead of plugging your helmet mic into the camera, I just used a cheap audio recorder. All you have to do is record your audio on the external audio device and then sync the audio in post when you're editing your video. Also, here's a little workaround. To sync audio with a camera and an audio recorder, all you have to do, honk your horn three times or clap. It'll make the entire situation way easy. So what would be the point of me telling you guys that if I didn't test it out for myself, right? Well, here's an example vlog that I did with this setup. What's going on, guys? So this is to show you that you can vlog with this setup. Does this look like just like a GoPro? I don't think so. I don't think it's quite there, but I think it's really close. And for $100, you could get four or five of these for a, another GoPro that you could, you'd have to pay like $500 for. If you're going to get it to moto vlog with, I want to put it on a setup while on my helmet where I would be moto vlogging. So there you have it guys, that's the Firefly S6. I honestly think that this is a great option for you guys that are trying to save some money on an action camera. Other than the audio issue, the camera far exceeded any type of expectations that I had for it, and I actually see myself adding this camera as maybe like a second camera to my personal setup. I do have to say thanks to the guys over at GearBest for sending me the camera to review for you guys. If you want to check out this camera or anything else I talked about in this video, I left links in the description for you guys to check out. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm Chase, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.